So yeah, my, my name's George. I've been working with NLIS now for 25 years um, from inception. So hopefully I can guide you through. So today we'll go through the NLIS database. We'll log in, we'll run some um, a transfer and we'll run some reports. So the first thing is to log in. And we'll log in when you see NLIS.com, you see this new login page. We'll use MyMalay to log in. And the advantage of MyMalay is you can link multiple accounts. And I'll show you some of my accounts. So you create a MyMalay account first, and then you're able to log in. <clears throat> MLA, MyMalay is a bit of a dashboard and allows you to link your LPA account, your MSA account, and the bias account. And I've already linked my and the bias account. But you can link in other things like LPA, MSA, EMBD, my feedback. So we'll click onto here. Continue to analyze. And these are all the accounts that I have linked to my account. They're all my test accounts. So we're going to log in as a producer today. Click on login. And this is your typical home page. So the first thing is you can change the species. So if you're working with cattle, you do that. Today, we're going to be working with sheep, individual, or goat individual. And they're both the same. But today, we'll just do the sheep individual. The first thing is up here, there's a little help button. Click on the help. Help tools. And these are all the guides that we have available. Now, some of them are old and we are updating these, but there's some, there's a whole heap of tech tips or user guides or how to. So you click on any of these and they open up. So I click on device list. And there's a tech tip to run a report on looking at active prop tags on your property devices. So this is a, a range of different um, reports you can run. Go back to help tools. There's a whole heap of them down here. We'll close them down. Go back to the home page. And the first thing I do, and for this purpose in particular, I'll just hide the header, which gets rid of this big blue heading. So I click on hide header. This gives us more real estate to play with. This change button is where you can click on change and update your details, typically your email address. So you may want to go back and change your email address or update it. Go back home. So just be mindful that we need to communicate with you quite often. And the best way to do it is by email. Quickest, cheapest, easiest way to do it. And when you use the database, every time you hit any interaction, it will send you an email confirming what you've done. So keep your emails up to date. So what are we gonna to do today? Well, we're gonna go through and do a transfer. So we go, I want to, and there's a few options. There's the livestock moved off my property, sheep and goats, which is what we're gonna do, or on my property, so this is what we're going to do. As both Cherie and Elizabeth said, it's the responsibility of the person receiving the livestock to do the transfer. And one of the last things that Elizabeth mentioned was if the agent does it or says that they're going to do it, make sure they have, make sure they give you a receipt number called an upload ID, which I'll show you in a minute. So today we're going to move some sheep onto my property. So we'll click on this one. We go. And those SA camel leads are llamas and alpacas, South American camel leads. So they're also in the database. So we're going to type in the details, usually the easiest way to do it. And there's six fields, very simple. In this field here, you type up or copy and paste, like I've just done, I've just copied and pasted in a list of tags. And you notice that I've used the visual tag number on one, two, three, four, five. And then I've used the RFID 
different tags. One, two, three, four, five. So there's 10 tags all up. And you can just use one or the other. You can just use the RFID if you have a scanner. If you've only got a few and you want to eyeball the tag, you can write the tag numbers down. A lot of times people who do that make a mistake. You know, if there's lots of numbers. So just be careful. Take a photo with your camera, with your phone. Um, and then you can write, transcribe a number. But here you can enter in the tag number. From a reader, copy and paste is the easiest way. Where are they going to? They go to my property QDZZ. These are my test picks. So, and they're my Queensland test picks. That's where they're moving to. They're coming from QBZZ. So, they're my two properties. I think the last thing Elizabeth did mention was enter in the NVD label. So, we're entering in the label number. They're moving today. And I noticed. A few people ask questions in the Q and A. There's twelve head. I know there's only ten tags, but there's twelve head. Two of the sheep I purchased, or I moved on to my property, didn't have electronic tags because they were born last year. You know, they're born before the mandatory date. So this gives us two things. It gives us the individual ten. So we know ten tag numbers, device numbers, and there were twelve head all up. You continue. It always gives you a confirmation page. Is this what you want to do? I'm going to move them to this property, from this property, with this waiver number. The table has 12. There's the numbers. We hit send. And this is live on the live database. It gives us the upload IDs. It gives us two upload IDs in this case because we're doing the individual movement of 10 devices and the mob based movement of 12 devices. So both are done. An email is sent to this email address is when the database is processed, you get an email. Now while on this page, you click on view my transaction history. This is gonna show us all the things I've done on the system in this state range. So today, And these are the two tag upload IDs that I just did. So we see there's an error and there's a warning. And this is every time you do it, it either comes complete, which means there was no issue whatsoever, or there was error and a warning. Here we have an error and a warning. We click on the error and it says this device is already registered to the PIC you are transferring to. <clears throat> I had this tag number in there twice as a test. So you can see what I was talking about. It's in there twice. So it's saying, I can't move this to QDZZ 3333 because you previously moved it. And we we'll click on the warning. And it tells us an identical movement already exists. So I've already done a movement with 12 head from this pick to this pick. So it's, it's not a problem. It's simply saying you've done it. And you may move 12 on, 12 on. You might have a, a little truck that can only fit 12 animals on, so it does it a few times. You're using the same NVD, which is that 5555, 4444. So similarly, we've, we've, we've done it, but we've noticed that you've done the same thing before. So we let the transfer go through and sends out a warning. So the major difference between an error and a warning is an error, we cannot do it. And in this case, because the animal was already transferred, So we go back home, back to this page. We want to look at other transfers we've done previously. So what's happened for the last three days, 14th, 15th, and 16th. Some more transactions. We'll go back to the beginning of the month. So there are all the transactions. So that's and the transactions are either an upload of new data or simply asking queries like these are. So that's a very simple way to enact a transfer. And remember, it's mandatory for the receiver to do it. Sale yards, auctions plus, those people don't do them 
aid, some stock agents may do it for you, so you can ask them to do it, but it's generally your responsibility. The next part is <clears throat> some reports. And from this home page, there's notify the database of, and these are transactions. And a transaction is where you're changing data. In other words, you've moved an animal, set an animal to dead, set an, a, a device to inactive, putting statuses on them like in, lost. So these are actions. And down here is a list of the different reports. Search the pick register is one of the most uh, popular on reports. Click on this one. If you know a property, and we'll use the ones I've been using. If you receive an email or an NVD, you want to find someone's pick, you can search by their name, the state, the town. We'll search by pick. And there's the details for this particular pick. So if you need to find a pick, you can do a reverse search, search by a surname, name, a few other criteria. They're very popular to use, especially if you're using trying to fill out an NVD. So other reports we'll go through. View generator reports. And this will give us a list of all the reports I can run. What we're going to look at, we just could look at two reports. One of them is this one here. I've purchased some devices. I want that list. I want to export it. So we go devices purchased. Now, that's for I have two properties linked to my account. We'll look at device purchase for this pick. And what I purchased this year. A thousand tags. Gives me the species. There's a sheep. And these are sortable. All these headings are sortable. The pick, RFID, MLS ID. So we sort on species. They're all sheep. I can sort by this number, so there's the first tag, scroll down, all, and this is going to now give me all 1,000 on the screen. And if I want the RFID and the analyze number, you just do export, and you the RFID and analyze ID. You can open the file. There's the file there. You can save that as an Excel file or a multitude of different files. So there's your list of tags. Some people call that the tag bucket file and it's used by software if you're using your software. You go back home. View generate your reports. We go. And this is the last report I'll show you. We want to see what's been transferred onto my property. We just transferred animals onto this property, QDZZ. So if I bought some animals, and there's the nine, there was supposed to be 10, one had an error. So there's the nine. If you buy animals and the agent says, or the person who sold them to you said that they've done the transfer, you can log in and look at it yourself. So last I've transferred onto my property under the reports, select the date range, click go. And there's a list of your animals transferred onto your pick. So I've just gone back to the start of the year, 21 animals. So that's in a nutshell, how you do transfers. We go back to the homepage. If you want to do goats, exactly the same thing. Goat individual. You want to transfer onto my property. That's the same process. So for the goat, the sheep, identical process. The reports are identical. Click on home. And like I said, go to the help tools. They are a little bit out of date. But use the help tools and you can run reports and look at how to do functions, that is how to do transfers, and also how to run reports.
And remember, the reports are always sortable and exportable. So you export that data into Excel. If you've ever been audited, you need to show evidence. You go to the exact same thing, go in here, run reports. You want to see what's moved onto your property and you simply show evidence by saying, you asked me to do the last transfer of those nine head, there they are there. So you can give them evidence that they are on your pick.